Hello and welcome back to the Arturia Jupiter 8 video series. Today we're looking at phasers. So this is an effect unit and here is our mono phaser. Now phasers are very similar in many respects to chorus and flange in that a copy of the original signal is made. But whereas with chorus and flanges the, the copied signal is offset by a set amount producing effectively an infinite series of harmonically related intervals with a phaser that's not done what happens with the copy in a phaser is that individual notches are cut out of the frequency uh, using a process known as all pass filtering basically you flip the phase at a set and arbitrary frequency of the copy reapply it back to the original which means that most of the signal gets left alone but where let's say at two kilohertz the signal's been flipped those two signals, the original and the copy, will cancel each other out. And that's going to create a notch. It's going to create a single tooth of a comb filter. And the process of phasing is introducing multiple notches. The stages tell us how many notches are being cut. And so basically, by introducing more stages, we introduce more filtering. Now, bear in mind that this doesn't necessarily make the effect deeper or richer or better it's not simple it's not simply a case of saying better or worse with phasers different stage phasers sound different because a different type of notch shape is being applied to the uh, to the copied wave and so you have to listen to each of them so if we start off with a stage 2 phaser and i'll set some of these to basic values. So here we've got a 0.1 kilohertz sweep rate, which means every 10 seconds, whatever's going on in this unit is gonna, it's basically a sine wave being applied, a modulation amount is being applied to this copy to sweep through a set of frequency ranges. Now, with our amount being set to 0.5, which is basically we are applying some modulation Let's ignore that value for the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the LFO a square because what you'll hear now is the original signal unprocessed and then the notch filter being applied. So that's the notch. There's the original signal. So we've got a sawtooth wave here with all those frequencies and that's what happens when you cut some of those frequencies away. So as you can hear, if there's no sine wave in the modulation, if there's no sweeping uh, between these two copies, you don't get a phase or a chorus or a flange. Any of these effects rely on motion. It's all about the, the relative motion of two waves against each other. And so it's really interesting to apply a square wave to a phaser effect and you don't get phasing you get a filter that is a static filter. Now if I turn the LFO into a sign, now the modulating relationship between those two waves is what causes the classic phase effect. And you can see the two um, wave amounts that the LFO being applied to the copy, picking up these notches and moving them as the, um, as the frequency around which this notch is cut changes, it basically sweeps through the frequency range. And the reason why a phaser is called a phaser is literally because those arbitrary selections uh, of frequencies where notches are cut out, um, the, the effect is applied by knocking them out of phase and then reapplying them back to the original, cutting those frequencies away. Now then, the sweep rate is the speed at which this thing is sweeping through the wave. The amount is the distance from the original offset that the frequency sweeps are being applied. So this is where we have the sweep start. So this 
this effect now comes into play. So at the moment, our center point around, around which these sweeps are occurring is 520 hertz. If I bring this right down, you can see now the sweep doesn't get very far into the, the graph. You can see it rippling and as I pull this amount down, the distance through which it travels across the frequency range is going to get smaller and smaller. Until eventually, even the fundamental is hardly being affected. So th there is still a frequency sweep, but it's just in these low frequencies now, uh, around the 211 hertz um, center point. Pull this right down and now we'll, we'll be lucky to see any change at all. There, we're just coming in now. There we go. So it started out at 20, it swept through the frequency curve and it's just about hitting the fundamental and then disappearing again. Feedback, just like with the chorus and flange unit, sends the output signal back in. And I don't find the feedback unit in this um, particular phaser to be particularly useful, at least in the mono version. But you can occasionally get like lightsaber resonances. Let's try and find one. There we go. A little bit of a woof. Take it away. So like I say, I, I, I've i not been able to elicit very much value from the mono feedback setting of this. I've even been through a load of presets to try to find something where there is an example of some feedback being used. Uh, this was the best I was able to find, the I am hungry um, preset. Yeah, not not a big fan of this knob. <laughs> it's, it's not something that I envisage using very often. I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to have very much um, effect on this particular unit. Now, whilst I have to say I'm pretty underwhelmed with the monophaser on this synth, I don't think it's particularly spectacular. The same can't be said for the stereo phaser. I think this thing is absolutely gorgeous. And now, feedback really does stuff so here we've got two independent phases a uh, slow phaser going on in the background in the on, in the left ear this is a stereo effect and a faster phase going on in the right ear let's try to kind of identify each of them in turn hear that over here the left ear. Let's make these a bit deeper. There's resonance. So that's the the phased signal being fed back into itself. Like I say, in the stereo unit, these things work. You know, the f feedback is a perfectly reasonable thing to have in a phaser unit, and in the stereo phaser, it, it seems to do what it's supposed to be doing. sync those together it basically just ties them to the host BPM so now if I click and move these controls we get 
um, tempo based offsets instead. I really wish the uh, the displays would update immediately rather than you having to click on them, but there it is. It took me a while to figure out what dual mode does. It basically monoizes it. So there we have. genuine stereo signal see if I turn it into dual mode now both phases are being fed into both ears when I said it took me a while to figure out there is no mention of that control anywhere in the documentation I don't know why it's just missed out so if I'm applying phasing to uh, an effect on this unit, I'm going to use the stereo phaser. It's vastly superior and you get that really lush kind of thick. All of these tutorials that I do, I'm just using a simple saw wave here and deliberately not introducing a complex sound because we want to hear the effect. So it's making a saw wave sound nice. <laughs> that takes some doing. That's all for this episode. In the next one, we'll deal with the rest of the mono effects, uh, distortion, EQ and ring mod. I uh, hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.